Well, I mean, I feel like the majority of people, they get all of their information about Iceland from the Mighty Ducks movie. So, <laughs> so, so I, of course, I, so I played hockey for 20 years, so I was like, all oh, Mighty Ducks, like, what's the vibe of, like, the entire thing of Iceland being the bad guys in the movie? Listen, man, like, nobody's really seen the movie in Iceland, but all of my friends in the U.S. who are, like, my age, they all, <laughs> they keep talking about this movie. So I gotta rewatch it, man. But uh, yeah, that is a strong reference. Like, I feel like feel like that's the only thing Americans knew about Iceland until like ten years ago. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, another thing that I that I do know about Iceland, and I, I've actually I've tried it before, and I, I, not to be offensive, but I can't say I was a big fan of it. I, I actually I need to make sure that I say this right. Is it is it Benevin the drink? Okay, so. Basically, so you're you're eating some fermented shark and then doing this shot, right? So tell me a little bit about all of this and like what goes into it here. Well, we like to uh, consider it like the Trinity thing that you do, like, and we, and then we kind of you're one of us, you know. It's it's like the thing you do when you're in Iceland. Yeah, so you're right. They do the fermented shark, which I will say smells worse than it tastes. That uh, are yeah. yeah, and then you do the shot of Brennaman, which is kind of like our national kind of drink I mean it's like Akavit it's sort of just moonshine you know uh, cumin alcohol uh, acquired taste as well uh, and then we like to have you guys do the nose tobacco which is Icelandic very old very strong so yeah it's like literally if you don't shed a tear you're you're a Viking for sure but that's tough you know yeah I love it well I mean I don't think that we're gonna find any of it here for uh, for bourbon and beyond uh, yeah, I mean, we'll definitely bring some next time, but, uh, you know, it is bourbon and beyond. So, I mean, outside of that, like, are you a, uh, a bourbon fan? Are you a bourbon drinker at all? Uh, no, I have to be honest, man. I tried I tried with bourbon. Bourbon being probably my favorite of the bunch, but, um, no, I don't really mess with brown liquor unless it's tequila. Tequila is my thing. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely going to find that here. You'll, you'll get some tequila, you get some bourbon and everything. But, uh, yeah, very, very different kind of taste. I enjoy trying good bourbon, though. This is definitely the place. I usually pick up, like, a bottle or two when I'm in Kentucky and give it to my dad. I know a lot of, a lot of fans of whiskey. Uh, just for me, uh, yeah, it doesn't sit as well with me as I mostly drink wine and uh, tequila, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's like, yeah, you might be in the mood, but other times it's like, eh, maybe, maybe I'm going to pass on this. But uh, hopefully you can get yourself a, a good bottle while you're here at Bourbon and Beyond. But, uh, you know, I want to talk about, you know, festival settings compared to, uh, you know, a, a normal tour setting. Obviously, festivals always a different kind of beast. So, you know, what is going on in the back of your mind mentally when it's like, okay, like, how are we going to go and approach a festival setting versus, you know, just being out on tour as your headline? show for sure man um yeah i mean a festival is a throw and go we don't really get to like sound check and like have all day to prepare you know you kind of have to just go into it and and roll with the punches you know but that's also like a fun challenge i think and and you're right i mean obviously you know you have to be aware that not everyone in the crowd is there because of you i mean a lot of people maybe but uh of course you want to like you know play your hits and the, the songs that the people know and then try to win them over that's also the challenge of a festival yeah. i think for a lot of bands is like you know you have to win them over again like you, you kind of yeah. at, like 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 it was in the beginning so i i enjoy that challenge um and yeah i just like i've said this before but i kind of like you know doing festival festivals at the same time as uh, as your own shows because it just kind of like gets away from groundhog day man like yeah. you know what i mean like it's it's been awesome this run like we've done a couple of theaters and we're doing obviously the amphitheaters which i love arenas which can also be fun but you know that's more difficulty sound wise etc and then festivals you know so i just you know i think good musicians should be able to do all and it has challenges but i think those are fun and they kind of keep things you know the, the keep things different you know yeah i mean it definitely it mixes things up a little bit and you know you're not just like you said groundhog day and things but um you know and, and when you're kind of putting together a set list for a festival it's obviously very different from you know a tour because you have little like just a short window of time to do everything but when you think about full tour set list you know headlining show you got staple songs, you got, you know, those fan favorites, you got new music, anything like that. What's a song 
that you wish you could put on the set list, but for some reason it just it never makes the cut. It's always right there, but just it, you just can't squeeze it in either for time or the complexity or what. Is, do you mean festivals? I, for a, like a headlining show, In general. Yeah. That's tough. I mean, I'm at, I'm at the you know uh, point in my career where we're putting out our third record now, like later this year or next year. So we've put out like four singles already off, off of it this year. Um, so that's like a luxury problem, I guess, because now we kind of we have to start narrowing it down. We can't just play them all. I remember starting out and then we didn't have enough songs, you know. So we just have to. I'd make them up sometimes on stage, you know. Yeah. So this is a different problem. But uh, I don't know. Of course, it's it's enjoyable, but it, it also comes with like people want to hear different songs, yelling out songs, and you're kind of like, I'm sorry, I wish I could. I just yeah. we don't have the time to play them all for you tonight, you know. So we kind of like try to mix it up sometimes. I've seen the Stones do things like where they have the fans choose on social media between songs yeah. and stuff. So you can get playful with it, I guess. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I think a healthy rotation is probably the the way to go. Yeah, it's almost like the uh, the Pearl Jam kind of mentality of like you know sit down, all right, write it out, and then that's what we're gonna play, you know, here. So I mean, it's always interesting to see you know what songs people are gravitating towards and and all of that. But uh, you did mention you know the brand new album that's gonna be coming out, and no official date right now. But you know, how has this process been with this album and uh, recording and everything? Because it's been a hot second since you know since the last album came out. So how is the process for you guys as a band kind of evolved and the music evolved with it yeah i mean last one was tricky with the covid we kind of like really like so many you know got sucker punch there with with the covid having the album basically ready and the tour ready to go and we waited 18 months to to kind of you know put out the album and, and go tour again and um when it was time to tour finally in 22 i mean that's kind of we did you know over 100 shows that year which is a lot and but my process is basically kind of the same i mean i do the majority of the work so i'm like back and forth i kind of split my time when i'm not touring in iceland and nashville nashville kind of becoming my second home so yeah i feel like i'm always in the process of obviously working on on the recordings um but like i said you know i I've, i had a lot of time last year you know, did, we did some touring as well, but I was focused on the album last year. So I really have to, you know, use the time where we're not viciously on the road. I mean, you know, these this tour as well is quite intense. So there isn't, you know, a lot of free time. So I have to I have to make the most of the time when I can. So so last year was a great year for me uh, and for us, you know, mostly recording in Nashville, like I said. Um, and yeah, just, you know, getting very close and, and pretty excited. I mean, like you said, there's a couple of songs that are out already. Lonely, uh, Lonely Cowboy, uh, which you got to shoot the music video in the Coliseum. Like, uh, what? Like, how does how does that even come together? Like, you got somebody that you just call me, like, hey, like, can we rent the Coliseum for a little bit? Nah, we, I mean, we had a production company. Always, it's insane amount of money you have to you have to spend to get that, and uh, and they they say no. They said no to Beyonce. I mean, you really have to be lucky. We obviously went in there with full integrity, showed them like these beautiful videos that we've done before yeah. it's a live performance art you know and um, and luckily I have great contacts uh, amazing friends in Rome so so yeah I kind of went in there with the locals so like, like you know uh, and that yeah that's truly like once in a lifetime super proud of that and, and feel super grateful and lucky to, to have able to be done yeah to, to done that yeah, well, I love it. Uh, make sure go and check out the uh, music video. We're going to have that posted up on our website, all1051.com. JJ from Kaleo, looking forward to checking you guys out in just a little bit here at Bourbon and Beyond. I appreciate you taking the time, my man. Hell yeah. Thanks for having me, man.